What an agonizing decision the father faced. He had to sacrifice his son so that others could live. I think so many times we get to, to putting God in a different kind of a class where we don't realize just how much it cost him to give his only son so that we could live. People on the train had no idea what had gone on at that bridge, did they? They, they were just completely oblivious to the fact that someone had given so much so that they could continue to live. You know, folks, I think that's what we face in the world today as well, right? Folks are going about doing all the things that they do. And so you saw folks on the train laughing and joking. You saw folks on the train uh, reading and, and going about business. You saw folks on the train doing all different kinds of things that we do in life. The fact is, there's been a sacrifice made so that those folks, so that we folks, so that we all <laughs> can live. Amen? And, and while it's really sad, I mean, that's one of the saddest videos I've ever seen, isn't it? It just tears your heart out. It's a really sad video. Isn't it just as sad? What happened to Jesus on the cross? His torment and his agony wasn't over in a few seconds. His torment and his agony continued on. He went through extreme suffering, suffering beyond what any of us can imagine so that we can live, so that we can live. That's good news, isn't it? That Jesus loved us so much that he would give his life for us. Do we realize what good news that is for us to share with other people? Now, I wouldn't advise you go around showing this video to everybody. It really is kind of making you wonder, right? Making you think. But does it make you think? Does it make you think how important it is that people know? Because just like that train was headed for certain catastrophe, for the loss and death of many people, so on this train of life, people are headed for certain catastrophe for the loss of their eternal souls in a place called hell. Unless somebody tells them the good news that has already occurred, the good news that impacts all generations who will receive the good news that Jesus has given his life. The Father has given the Son so that we can have eternal life. Amen. Do you understand how it, why it's so important that evangelism be a part of everything that we do as Christians in our everyday life? Because people are going to die and forever be lost if we don't tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles and want to turn with me to Matthew chapter uh, 20, 28, Matthew chapter 28. Would you stand as we read this verse together? Let's look at the beginning in, in verse 18. And Jesus came up and spoke with them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Father, I thank you for this, your word. And Lord, I thank you for the commission you have given us to go and share the good news with others. Lord, as we look around in the world, there's all different kinds of people in all different kinds of situations. Most of, most of them, Lord, have no idea of the eternal consequences of their present day actions. I pray, Lord, that we would be able to share with them the good news that God can take care of those eternal consequences. That if they come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness, if they come to Jesus and believe in His Son, in Jesus the Son, Lord, that the Father will take them into heaven to be with 
him eternally when they leave this life. Father, I pray your blessing upon this good news. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon our ability to share this good news as a church, as a people, as individuals. Father, give us the heart to love and to care for people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. There's a preacher in a small church. He was been preaching there for some time and was discouraged about the results. Uh, just didn't seem to be much uh, that the church was doing and much that they were uh, being encouraged by. So one Sunday he decided he was going to fire up the congregation. You know, he was going to really give it to them. And, uh, and so he began to preach. Uh, he said, brothers and sisters, uh, he said, we are dead, but we can come back to life. But we got to start crawling. And one of the older gentlemen in, in the back of the, the congregation said, let us crawl, brother, let us crawl. He said, church, if we want to grow, we can grow by leaps and bounds. But we have to, to start walking. And the, the gentleman in the back said, let us walk, brother, let us walk. <laughs> you know. And he went on, and he, he's getting excited by now. Never had a response like this before. I know what he feels like. <laughs> Friends, we can outgrow this building and, and build a new one. We can reach the lost. We can meet the needs of the community. We can set an example for other churches to look to. But we got to run. And the, the man and gentleman in the back said, we got to run, preacher. Yes, we run, preacher. And, and preacher said, amen, brother. And now in order for us to, to crawl, walk, and then run, there's one thing we got to do. We got to work. The gentleman in the back didn't respond right away. Then he said, let us crawl, preacher, let us crawl. <laughs> you know, if evangelism is going to be an important part of our church, we have to have an important part of our lives as individuals. We've got to, to really make it what we should do and what we must do in every instance of our life. There's a, a scripture I want you to look at uh, beyond this one. This is our theme scripture. Brandon, yeah, thank you. The master said to the slave, go into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come out in so that my house may be full. You, you see, that, see that seriousness of what we're about as a church? Are we about to meet here every Sunday and enjoy the wonderful music and, and go home and then go back to our lives and, and, and have it not impact us during the week? I don't think that's what we're supposed to be about. Amen? Crawl, preacher, crawl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're supposed to be about more than that. We're to hear, come, and worship, and the, and the music is wonderful, and hopefully the message are instructive. But ultimately, that's to fuel us to go back to our daily lives and use that fuel to impact our world. Amen? Amen. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, so how we, are we doing at that as a church? Yeah, there's a young man uh, sitting on a, a park bench watching the squirrels up in the trees, and he saw this one particular squirrel uh, looking like it was going to jump into another branch. But that branch was so far away. And the, the man thought, man, that squirrel's never going to make it. And pretty soon that squirrel kind of reared back and he jumped and he missed <laughs> he missed but he landed on a lower branch uh, there was another gentleman there that was watching with him and the other gentleman said you know I've seen hundreds of them jump like that and even with the dogs barking on the ground and miss like that as well but I've never seen one of them give up trying then he added, I guess they must think it's better to take a big risk and spend the, your whole life where you don't want to be. Better to take a big risk than to spend your whole life where you don't want it to be. Folks, I know sharing your faith is a risk. I know in your job, in the marketplace, sharing your faith can be a risk. I know in your neighborhood, sharing your faith can be a risk. But isn't it better to take a big risk 
than to allow people that you love and care about to end up in a place where they don't want to be, where you know they shouldn't be. Isn't it better to take a risk and share the good news? Uh, we've got to be about taking that risk. Uh, what, what is our strategy for reaching the lost? I want to share with you some things that are important for us to consider as we think about reaching the lost around us. First of all, the strategy for personal change. You know, if, if you're not personally involved in the gospel, if you're not personally being changed by the gospel, if you're not personally experiencing the benefits of new life in Christ, it's going to be hard for you to share with anybody else about those benefits. Isn't that right? It's going to be hard for you to tell them how important it is for them. We have to, first of all, appreciate our own salvation. This uh, passage up there in Titus chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 3, it says, For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds that we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You, you understand what, what uh, uh, Paul is saying in that, that passage as he writes to Titus? You understand what he's saying? He's saying, folks, we were miserable. We were lost. We were without hope. Uh, we were uh, caught up in our sins and in the world. Uh, we were once destitute and hopeless with no prospect of anything happening good or better in our lives. But Jesus Christ saved us. Amen? Uh, it's easy for us as Christians who understand where we once were or where we could have been today for us uh, to not be judgmental to those that are there where we once were or where we could have been. We need to be humbled to the sense to realize what God has done in our own heart. We have to be able to have a personal testimony of redemption in our personal lives for us to be able to share that redemption with other people. You know, you don't have to know a bunch of scriptures to share your faith with somebody. If you've been changed by Jesus Christ, that's what you have to know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I, you ever heard of the Rainbow Family of Living Light? Uh, it was a large group. Of, it is a large group of, of, of folks of 20 to 30,000 who meet somewhere once a year uh, in the United States. Uh, they met over in Paonia when I pastored over there many years ago. Uh, and uh, we tried to do a ministry among them. And, and we found, we set up a big revival tent outside of the camp, right outside of the camp. Uh, and uh, invited them to come in to the revival. You know, we only had two people ever come <laughs> to that revival tent. What we did uh, after that, we figured out that didn't work too well. <laughs> you know, so we started a ministry on the paths. This Rainbow Family of Living Light, there were all kinds of beliefs there. There was even a Christian camp, but you wouldn't really recognize the form of Christianity that they had there. But, uh, but they had all different kinds of people. Uh, you'd meet somebody on the path, and, and they'd be wearing a backpack. That was it. Just a backpack. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it was just all different kinds of things that were going on in that camp. We provided shovels for them so they could have latrines. I mean, they were completely unprepared for the weather. We provided blankets for them because their children were blue from the cold. I mean, it, it, it was something else up there. It was unbelievable. We found the only way we could really impact lives up there was by one-on-one -on -one speaking with people. And, and we found that they would be drawn to a musician. So my good friend Jack Jabor uh, over in Newcastle, uh, he came up to help us, and he would play the guitar, and then, then the rest of us would sing along as he played 
of many of the really what they wanted to hear were the old hymns <laughs> you know it's kind of amazing amazing grace it was very popular everybody knew the words to that and we'd be singing along and, uh, and then we'd share with them one on one those of us who were there with Jack and, and it was pretty effective as far as making it, uh, an impact on these folks but you know what we could share that they would always believe we didn't do a lot of good to spout a bunch of scripture because many of them didn't believe in the authority of the word of God now I do do you? Amen. Uh, I believe that the word of, of God is the truth of God. Uh, so it's really important to know scripture. But it didn't do a lot of good to spout scripture. It did do a lot of good to say, this is what Jesus did for me. Because they were all into experience. And if you could tell the experience you had with Jesus Christ, they would listen at length to your experience. I'm telling you, if all you have is your testimony, Look back on Titus. Consider where God brought you from. Consider what, what God kept you from as well in your life. Consider the person he has made you to be. And tell people about that. 